Oh, everybody, here we are. We're back at Godward Art Land, okay, where we're taking a different uh, approach to, to the scripture and how to read it and how to enjoy it, and how to digest it. Just like the Bible says, your words were found and I ate them and they were to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. So we're right back to devouring the word again and getting it into our system, into our, into our psyche, into our thought processes, um, so that it never leaves our conversation. Like Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, which means that it just never leaves your conversation. One of the ways to do that is through coloring. As we color, uh, we, we, we ruminate and, and, and meditate, and like I say, tailgate, you, you, begin to, you begin to internalize the word of God and its ways. It's just awesome. So I'm just continuing to work on something that I uh, shared with you uh, the last time, and that's about the fact that their hearts burned within them when Jesus talked to the two men on the road to Emmaus, and their they just their hearts were on fire when Jesus turned uh, or opened up the Word of God to them, the Scripture. Boy, wouldn't that be cool if every time the Bible was uh, taught or the Bible was declared? that you felt like, man, you just had heartburn, but it wasn't negative heartburn. It was spirit-driven, joyful, that's what I'm talking about kind of heartburn. Well, that's what happens when the Word of God is delivered in that kind of fashion. Um, yesterday, we, we took, took a look at the book here, and, uh, and I never mentioned the, the fact that it says up here, share your thoughts or a prayer in this tongue of fire, this tongue of fire. And so can I just share mine? Here we go. I'm going to say what it says. Lord, I've always known that if I'm where I'm supposed to be, I'm on fire. Thank you for causing me to be fired up when I'm in the right place at the right time. So wherever the fire falls is where God told you to be attitudinally, geographically, relationally, uh, physically, whatever it may be. You will find yourself not having to work up fire, but fire will fall. Well, we turn the page and we continue with this Word of God. And this is the right side, um, uh, from your perspective, open the scriptures to us. Our hearts burned within us while he opened the scriptures to us. So as you can tell, I'm kind of getting going here on the coloring, but I've only started. And uh, did this this morning, and of course, I noticed that the T kind of looked like a cross, and of course... Being a Christian, I thought, you know what, I think I better color that in because that is just the most recognizable symbol in the world. No other symbol is more vi violated, and yet no other symbol is more loved than this one right here, the cross, the cross of Christ, which was the um, form of torture and, and death that the uh, people did, the Romans did at that time, and Jesus happened to be a part of that time. And so he was uh, nailed on a cross for us. Go to the other side and decide to get a little psychedelic here, a little bit of 70s. And that scripture, Psalm 119, 18, learned it when I was a kid, internalized it, and it's just been such an encouraging thought. And here it is. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Open thou mine eyes, O Lord, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That's how I learned it in New King James. But there it is. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things from your law. Isn't that just, just think about that for a second. Jesus, or the psalmist is saying, hey God, just because I'm looking at it doesn't mean I'm seeing very well. And he says, so open my eyes that I might see Open my eyes that I might see. And of course, I think his eyes are already open physically, but open eyes in your heart are all about attitude, isn't it? Humility, brokenness before the Lord. And then the challenge here is to write out verses some, somewhere on this page. So I decided to write two. One of them here is uh, Psalm uh, or Isaiah 42, 7. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. So that's what the Lord does. And then the other one I wrote was Psalm 146, 8. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. So my little dude here understands what I'm talking about. I mean, he's, he's, he's just a Lego guy, but I declare in the name of the Lord Lego dude that this is the only way to live. And that is 
by, uh, well, just being open to God. And, uh, you know, might, you might even want to take your hat off in reverence. Yeah, okay. There, ooh, you look like me. You look just like me. I mean, look at this dude. He looks just like me, okay? And uh, no hair. So uh, we, we've done due reverence. Let's put the hat back on. And uh, isn't that just a lot of fun? Oh, the hat came off again, this poor guy. There he is. Well, we'll just look together. Him and I look the same, okay? So all I can say is to all of my Facebook family is let's pray. Oh, God, open our eyes that we may behold wonderful things from your law. Boy, that's just powerful to think that law can be a wonderful thing. The ways of God, the laws of God that keep us on the path. So those are my words today, Facebook family and everybody who's listening. Remember, whenever the word of God has been delivered with power, something's on fire and eyes are being opened. So see ya. <laughs>